in this video we are going to talk about maxima and minima there are four different definitions we need to remember one is called absolute minimum other one is called absolute maximum the third term is called local maximum and the last one is called local minimum so what is absolute maximum we define the absolute maximum like this the absolute maximum value of a function f on the domain d if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all the values of x in the domain the absolute minimum value of a function f on the domain d if f of c is less than or equal to f of x for all the values of x in the domain d an absolute maximum or absolute minimum is sometimes referred by the word global maximum or global minimum the maximum and minimum values of functions are also called extreme values of the function in the same way we define the local maximum value of a function f if f of c c is at any point in the function is greater than or equal to f of x when the value of x is near to the point c the local minimum value of the function f if f of c is less than or equal to f of x when the value of x is near to the point c see this diagram so in this diagram we have some points over here a c e d and b okay see the first point a in the first point a there is no smaller value for the function so we denoted this point a as absolute minimum if i move to the next point c we have a peak over here so this is the peak for the point c so this point we called local maximum that means there is no greater value for the function near to this point if i move to c this curve will going down so this is the end of the point so if i go along with c i will reach this point so if you see here there is no nearby points i say this point as local minimum if i move to the next value a again there is a peak this is the highest peak we have already one peak over here you can assume like a mountain so here we have a small mountain here we have a big mountain so this big mountain or this higher point we called absolute maximum so absolute maximum means there is no greater value of f anywhere and this also we denoted as local maximum if i move to the last point b again i will end up here and here after this point there is no smaller value so we call this point as local minimum so for this entire graph the point a we say absolute minimum the point d we say absolute maximum and the remaining point c is called local maximum e is called local minimum and b is also called local minimum so in the conclusion we say that the absolute maximum is f of a absolute sorry absolute minimum is f of a absolute maximum is f of d local maximum we have two points f of c and f of e and local minimum or f of b and f of d before we are going to calculate absolute maximum and absolute minimum of a function in a closed interval a comma b we have to know what do you mean by a critical point or what do you mean by a critical number a critical number or a critical point of a function f is nothing but a number c 
in the domain of the function f such that it should satisfy the condition f dash of c is equal to 0 or the derivative of f of c does not exist. We will discuss more about this in the next slide. We are going to adopt a method called closed interval method for finding the absolute maximum or absolute minimum of a function. So we are going to follow three steps. In step number one, we are going to find the value of the function at the critical numbers which lies between the given interval a comma b. In step number two, we find the value of the function at the end points of the interval. That is at the value of a, what is the function value? At b, we have to find what is the function value. In step number three, among these three values, that is the critical number value and the end point value, we are going to conclude what is the absolute maximum value and what is the absolute minimum value. Let us begin with first example. Find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of the function f of x equal to minus x power 2 plus 3x minus 2 over the interval 1 comma 3. So here this is my a and this is my b. So what I do first I have to calculate f of 1. f of 1 means we are going to substitute the interval 1 in the function that will give you 0. Then I have to substitute the second in point 3 also in the function. So that will give you the value minus 2. Then in step number 2 I have to calculate the critical point. To find the critical point what we have to do we have to find the derivative of the function. So derivative of minus x power 2 will give you minus 2x derivative of plus 3x will give you plus 3 and derivative of the constant will be 0. So I have concluded that the derivative of f of x equal to minus 2x plus 3. To find the critical point we have to set the derivative value equal to 0. So I am taking minus 2x plus 3 equal to 0. So minus 2x is equal to minus 3. Dividing both side by minus 2 will give you x equal to 3 over 2. So this 3 by 2 is nothing but my critical point c. Okay. So here the critical point is 3 by 2. Then what I do? I have to substitute the critical point also in the function. So if I substitute 3 by 2 in the function that will give you the value 1 by 4. So, if I substitute x value equal to 1, that will give you 0. If I substitute the critical point 3 by 2 in the function, it will give you 1 by 4. If I substitute the end of the interval 3 in the function, it will give you minus 2. So, among these three values, we have to select the maximum value and minimum value. So, it is very clear 1 by 4 is the maximum value, right? So I declare 1 by 4 is the absolute maximum value for the function and minus 2 is the small value. So I declare the absolute minimum value for the function as minus 2. One more question. Find the absolute maximum and minimum values of the function f of x equal to x power 2 minus 4x plus 3. Here the intervals are 1 and 4. So a equal to 1, b equal to 4. So let us calculate f of 1 will give you 0. Let us calculate f of 4 will give you 3. If I differentiate the function that will give you 2x minus 4. Then to find the critical point I have to set the derivative value equal to 0. So 2x minus 4 equal to 0 from the first two terms from here and here. Let me take the common factor 2 outside. So that will give you 2 times of x minus 2 equal to 0. From this it is clear that x equal to 2 is the critical point. Then I substitute the critical point also in the function that is f of 2 equal to minus 1. Then we form a table. For the value of x the function will give you 0. For the value of 4 the function will give you 
3 for the value of 2 the function will give you minus 1 then the maximum value 3 we say absolute maximum the small value minus 1 we say absolute minimum for example consider this figure in this figure the we have some points over here a b c d this a it's starting increasing over here and then it, after reaching this point it started decreasing similarly if you take the last point d after reaching the highest peak it start decreasing okay so what is my conclusion is first we have to say we have four critical points a b c and d the function f has local maxima at the point a and d why we say local maxima see the condition for local maxima the condition is the derivative should change from positive to negative so here see this one it starts increasing and then it start decreasing so positive and this interval we have negative so that is why we have concluded that the point a is a local maximum point okay similarly take the last point d so here we have a increased curve that means positive and after reaching the peak it starts decreasing that is negative so i can say that the point d also local maximum but if i talk about the number b what you will get here in the left side of the point b we have negative after reaching this point it start increasing that is positive okay so one negative and one positive so the point a has a local maximum the point d has a local minimum and b there is a change from negative to positive so if the change is from negative to positive then i say local minimum so the point b as a local minimum point okay how about the point c in c see this one in c this is the peak value see the left side left side the function gets increasing that is positive on the right side of the point c also the function gets positive so we have positive and positive so remember if i say first derivative test there should be some changes in the direction either positive to negative or negative to positive but here we have both positive and positive so i conclude that the function does not have a local extreme value at the point c okay so if i want to say any local extreme either maximum or minimum then the condition is the derivative value should be changed either positive to negative or negative to positive